Come and do what only you can do. Mighty man of Mighty man of Lion of Judah, we worship you, God. We bow down this morning and we worship you, King of Glory. Hallelujah! As I was on my way driving through coming to the studio, I was just watching the activities of life, people going already to their businesses, life moving on. It's a beautiful day. I was just looking at the activities of today and I said, Lord, you are awesome. From the time God created the world, it has never failed. The days will come and the night will come. And as we look at life and see what God is expecting from us out of this life he has given us. You know, it's amazing how God will have to put our life and calibrate it into days and months and years. And then you see age coming and you see us coming to the point where we arrive. <laughs> and then the hair turns white, gray, you know. And your, state, your strength starts failing, and we call them old men, old women. They were once young, they were once babies, and they grew. And that is how time goes. And on earth, we have seen it going and going. But you know what? It's not going to keep on going like that forever. He that created the world has told us that one day, the end of all these things will come. And the Bible asks us, what manner of men are we supposed to be? And I just thank God for the word that he has given us in the scriptures as we behold. When Jesus came, he began to confirm the details of the word of God and how the Lord have done things through the prophecies of the word. And so many of them have come to pass and so many of them are really unfolding before our eyes. And I just want to thank God for the authenticity of his word of the integrity of his word. And that is the word we declare every single day. You know, last night I was going home 
and I was doing some prayer work, walking through the streets and praying. Late in the night, I saw people who were involved in all manner of lifestyle in the night. You see the prostitution, you see the, 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 the drunk cats. You see, I said, Lord, why should people continue to commit sin and evil in the day you have made? Today is a beautiful day God has created, yet you will see people that will still commit sin, that will still commit atrocity. The Bible says that the Lord kept on looking at what the children of Israel were doing, and he said, I will cast them out of my sight because they have been doing iniquity. They defiled my land, he said. And you know what? The patient the Lord has had on it is because he is longing for us to come to the fullness of why he has been having patience. He patiently waits for us, for us to realize that he doesn't want anyone to perish. But you know what? He's not going to wait forever. He said, my spirit will not continue to strive with man will not continue, will not always strive with man because he is flesh. And as long as you permit your flesh to have the upper hand, you are actually preparing your eternity to be in doom, to be in ruin. Jesus described it. He said that their worms never die and the fire is never quenched. If you are living in sin, that is a destination you are creating for yourself. But God has commanded us to speak his word in case anyone that is perishing will hear and then be saved. You know, sometimes as preachers, when we preach and declare the word of God and preach to sinners, and we see some of them, or rather most of them, don't give heed to the word of God. And sometimes I'm like, Lord, these people have heard the word repeatedly. Why are they not, you know, considering repenting. I remember the Lord consoled me one particular time. He showed me the scripture in Genesis, how he talked to the first man he ever preached to. That was Cain. After the Lord came to him and told him, sin is knocking at your door. It's right there at the doorstep of your heart. Don't allow that sin to overcome you. Yet, we saw that Cain went ahead to allow that sin to overcome him and the consequences followed. In the book of Jude, he was also talked about the way of Cain and those that follow after the greedy works and the ways. You know what? You are giving life on earth and all the activities of life you see every day. One day, you're going to give account of it. What matters is that you hear the word of God and you return. He said, even if your sins are like scarlet, he can wash it. And they can be white as snow. You know, when you commit sin, the devil will bring the guilt of sin on you. And then the condemnation follows. And he even tells you, you can't even pray because you're so dirty and filthy. Yet God said, come unto me. He will not cast you out. He will forgive your sins. We've been handling the topic, God's involvement in his work on earth. God's involvement. God has a work on earth. We have emphasized on this week that the work that God is really consigned on, even though he is God creator, the supreme God, the sovereign God that reigns in all the realms of his dominion, he reigns. He reigns over all the earth. He reigns in the galaxies. He holds the world together. Together, the dominion, look at what he did to Nebuchadnezzar and he taught him a lesson to the extent that that man, you know, no one has ever fulfilled, you know, filled in the gap that Nebuchadnezzar did. He reigned all over the face of the earth. Look at the description of what that man is. He was like a tree in the midst, full the branches and all the fowls of the earth we are feeding from under that tree, you know, and when the Lord showed him you may be reigning on earth, but I am the sovereign Lord. I am the Lord of all lords. That man wrote a letter in the book of Daniel. He wrote it to every human being that is living at that time till our days. You can read it for yourself. He said that now he knows that God rules in the affairs of men. Yes, God rules in the affairs of men. God rules over governments. He rules over principalities. He has dominion. And the devil cannot do anything without taking permission. He said, ah, Peter, the devil have desired to have you. He is seeking permission to sift your ways. And look at that. And Job, in the life of Job, you saw that God had to give 
the devil permission for him to try him. There is nothing going on that God is not in authority. However, on earth, only one thing is needful for us to understand regarding the work God is working on earth. God is geared towards saving souls in all that he is doing. Only one thing is keeping the earth. And if you're here hearing us, I want you to understand clearly the the, the, the oxygen that is the breath you are breathing and the, and the food you are eating, the sun that shines upon your face every day, all of these systems are going on for you to realize that eternity is waiting and God doesn't want anyone to perish. This is one of the reasons why God has had long patience for mankind. But the truth is that he's not going to have the patience forever. The end is coming. The end is being folded up and it is for you to understand how God is involved in his work on earth. We've been looking at it because devil has come to a point. They have kept so many of the ministers of God busy. They are so busy that they are, are, are distracted from looking at the core message of the gospel we have been given. And we have looked at the life of Jesus. We have seen how Jesus have consciously and deliberately continued to focus on the mission. So many times his attention was drawn. We look at it this week, how some people in the book of John wanted to come by force and make him king <laughs> and how he just left them he perceived they were coming to take him by force why because men are always concerned about the system the authority how their life can be better on earth god is interested on how your life can be better throughout eternity life is just a short time given to us to live on earth but how you live your life determines where you are going to end up and that is why we still preach to people who have wasted the majority part of their life there is still hope as long as you are alive but if you ever make the mistake to cross this life without making peace with god you are actually a crop failure that means all the patience god has had on you for you not to perish was wasted and when you die and go to hell you didn't go to hell because of your sin i've repeated it here you didn't go to hell because god no not because of your sin you went to hell because you chose not to accept the, 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 the price that Jesus paid. You chose not to accept it. You chose not to make him the Lord of your life so that he can wash you and cleanse you and give you the power to overcome sin. If you are living in sin to today, I want to let you know that you have actually taken a toll where you regret for all eternity. And eternity is what? Eternity is forever. It doesn't end. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 66, the last chapter, it was the last verse that he told us clearly that their worms will not die. In eternity, we will come and look at the carcasses and the cubs and the, and those that have rebelled against God. Their fire will, they will be gnashing their teeth for all eternity. What a sight to behold. Get ready. If you're going to make it to heaven, get ready. Make sure you run your race because there will be a time you're going to go for sightseeing where you go and look at the carcasses. Is look at the people who are gnashing their teeth for all eternity, those that rebelled against God. God is really folding the earth, and in this last hour, where darkness is everywhere, the light that God is shining through the gospel is that men will see and come to the brightness of this rising. So God's involvement on earth has been focused on saving salvation of men. We also saw in this week that Jesus was asked by his disciples in the book of Acts chapter one, you saw where he told them, he said, don't be involved in the things that are not even part of what you are supposed to do. You are asking when he will restore the kingdom to Israel. They are looking at the physical Israel. They are looking at, at, at how their life should be better and be relieved from the bondage of the Romans at that time. They are no longer under the captive of the, uh, captivity of the Romans where they were reigned and ruled by them. Yet, there are always phases that will come and go. Right now, we see the nation of Israel, how the battle is still going on. You know what? The peace that can only come, only comes in Jesus. If Jesus said, until you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Do you say that? Oh my God. The peace that is for the nation Israel and for every human life on earth is in Jesus. He is called our peace. He broke down the wall of petition. And that is why the devil has no hold anymore. The things the devil is using is called wiles, lies, 
and all of those things he fabricates to deceive people. I pray for you, you will not be deceived. My prayer for you is that you will realize the love of God. See the goodness God has packaged in the gospel and escape for your life. We continue today as we look at God's involvement in his work on earth. I'm going to read the book of Luke chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, there were present at that season some that told him, that is Jesus, of the Galileans whose blood Pilate has mingled, mixed with the, their sacrifices. Verse 2 says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Verse 4, all those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them. Wow. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? That was Jesus' question to them. Verse 5 said, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Wow. That sounds brutal. Was he not concerned about the 12 he had that there was a wall, a wall that fell down and people were there? 18 out of all that were there were slain, killed instantly by the Belgian and the fall of that wall. And when Jesus was asking them, when they were asking, telling Jesus about the people, the Pilate, the Galileans, and Jesus came from Galilee, <laughs> they said those Galileans, Pilate killed them took their blood, mingled with their sacrifice, you know, and it could, so it's something that, you know, or deal with it politically. Come, uh, Jesus, you have the power, you can do this. They have tried bringing these things to Jesus for him to see, for them to see how he can involve in what is going on to make their life better, to make them see, you know, oh, Jesus, he heals us, he sets us free, he preaches, he multiplies our food, he does so many miracles, and no oh mind, he must really want us to live a better life. They have tried to bring him into the politics. They have tried to bring him into the, into the things that are the sufferings of that day. When they were telling him about the people that Pilate, Herod, rather, is it Herod? Yes. Killed and mingled their blood. That was Pilate. Mingled their blood with their sacrifice. He said, do you think these people are more sinners? They are sinners more than the ones that we are not killed? He said, not at all. But except you repent, Jesus will always point it down to the gospel and the repentance. Calamities will always come. Things will always happen. The devil here and there will be going about his activities for those who are not secured in God much more than that. There are people, not as if they did something worse than the others, but these are the things that flows in life. But God has come to save from the destruction that entered into humanity from the failure and the rebellion from the time of Adam, things that are evil will continue to flow. But God longs to save. And that is what the gospel is all about. Jesus made it very clear. He refused to be involved in the things people were appointed at him. He said, look at this. When they were referring to those that Pilate men go their blood. He referred them again to the other people. Maybe it was a recent news at that time. It was just, it maybe it just happened fresh. So when they were talking about this thing is happening, this one is happening, look at the blood that they mingled. It was so disgusting. People were so angry. Jesus, can't you intervene or interfere in this? Jesus told them, you think? That those people that lost their lives as we see today, so many people will lose their lives through this or through that or through the other one. It pains the heart of God that these things are going on. It is something that was kicked off and ignited because of the rebellion of man. Yet, God is in the business of saving souls. Can I tell you that as much as God wants us to live a peaceable life that we pray for, he is more interested in people turning to him, confessing their sins, repenting. Jesus said, I say unto you, 
if you don't repent, I tell you nay, but except you repent, what happens? You shall likewise perish. You shall perish in that manner. Either the world that is falling down and people dying or mingled with blood or calamity or famine. But you know what? What matters is that you have come to the place of repentance or else that death is certain, is imminent. It is sure. Praise the name of Jesus. God's involvement on his work, his work here on earth is very clear. We saw it very clearly that he is interested in making sure people come to the Lord. He gave a parable from verse 6. He said, and he spoke a parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon. I like this one. He sought fruit thereon. He found none, not even one. A, verse 7, then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Verse 8, and he answered said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, Thou shalt cut it down. When the gospel is preached, when God is releasing the good things of life, he is releasing it for people to realize his love and for them to know that they should depart from their evil ways. There is a fruit that God is expecting from every life on earth. And you know what? Some people have been cut short before their time. Look at God coming again. He is the owner of the vine. The dresser, of course, is referred to Jesus. And the tree is us that's supposed to bear the fruit. He said, why is this particular tree not yielding the fruit? Do you know that the life God is giving you, he's expecting to, to see a fruit of repentance for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He expects us to repent. Not just that you are having remorse for your sin. No, it is that you return and turn from that sin and confess your sin and say, Lord, I'm involved in this. And that is what God expects anytime he releases his word. That was what he was expecting in the life of Cain when he told Cain, you don't need to allow this sin to overcome you. You know, he was talking as if a friend was talking to a friend. All oh, these things of seeing God as one God like that, that will just hit your head or crush you. No, he wants, he said, come, let us reason together. He told us that in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, he said, come, let us reason together. Let us talk. I believe he was talking to Cain. Cain was not fearful of God. Even Cain was replying God and they were having a dialogue. He said, this thing, this thing you are handling as a toy is actually a sin. It's a snake. It has a venom. It will bite you and it will finish you up. It pains God that so many people, he have longed for them to come to repentance. Never came to repentance. Look, about, look at the men like Gehazi. Look at the men like Judas. Oh my God. Look at people. So many of them. That perished. Look at Achan. He didn't want them. That's why he gave us the commandments. He gave us the laws. And if we don't follow it, then as he keeps on going, he keeps on going, he keeps on pleading. He keeps on compelling you. Yes, he said plead. Yes. He said that God was in Christ reconciling the whole world to himself. He's not putting men's sins to them. That is God's work on earth. He is involved in your affairs. You see him pulling you, no, putting nudges in your spirit, telling you, don't do this again. You have done this before. You have done it now. Don't repeat it. There are people who they have... God have given them repeated warnings and they didn't know the next one they are going to do, they will go in for it. Not because God wants to kill them, but they have come to the fullness where the things can no longer tolerate them anymore. I tell you that God is involved in his work on earth and his involvement is that he wants to bring people to the place of conviction and no matter how it looks. Oh, our time is almost gone here. I want to read the book of Luke chapter 13 before today is gone. Luke 13, I'm going to be fast in reading it. It's six verses from 31 to 35, it says. Oh, five verses. 
The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence for fair Herod. We talk about Pilate, we talk about Herod. Now this is Herod. Herod will kill you. That was what they were telling Jesus. I'm reading Luke 13, 31 to 35. And Jesus said unto them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils and do cures today, tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following. Mm. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Verse 34 says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brook under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, you shall not see me unto you until the time when you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. God longs to gather not only Jerusalem, but men. He wants to gather them like a hen will gather the chicks under her wings so that the, the, the hawk of life, this thing that takes and picks up people's life, will not gather. He said, once you keep on going your way, the destruction is imminent. But as for his work, he said, I must walk. And with this kind of work, surprisingly, can be really conflicting because some of the powers of darkness and those in authority will find it, you know, irritating. It came to a point Herod was so, 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 so irritated at the work of Jesus. He said he wants to kill Jesus. And they have to, they were like, more like telling Jesus, see, you have to leave Galilee. You have to leave this place. Herod wants to kill you. And look at Jesus saying, I have a work to do. I must do it. You know, the work of God is, that is going on, he is work. He said, I must work today. I must work tomorrow. And the day following, he said, I will keep on working. He said, there are 12 hours in a day. And this day is coming to an end. And when the night comes, no man will walk. The night of life comes when no one has any other permission to continue to be on earth. That is where you give account of your life. I want to pray for somebody because my time is coming up. It's coming to an end today. And I want to pray for somebody who wants to ask the Lord to perfect the work he has been working in his life. God has been giving you nudges, pulling you, telling you not to continue in that sin. And you want to say, I want to respond to that nudging. I want to respond to that pulling. I want to respond to that thing the Holy Spirit has been telling me over and over. If you're ready to do that, he will be happy. Actually, he, Jesus told us that there will be joy in heaven. And they'll be rejoicing in the midst of the angels of God when one sinner comes back here. A sinner hearing me, will you delight in bringing joy to heaven by repenting of your sin and say, Lord, this work you have been working in my heart, I can't keep on confessing my sin every time I'm falling and getting up again. I want to receive the power to overcome sin. I want to pray for you. And then you'll see that the power dimension will be available. Nothing different with us. It is just that we receive the grace of God and the power and the enablement that makes us to live every day for the Lord. And we live every day not for sin. No, but unto the Lord. And that power is available. It can come to you today. Just say, Lord Jesus, here am I. Asking you to perfect your work in my life. I need you, Lord, to give me that power to live as a child of God. Let not your work be in vain. Say, Lord, I don't want to be like that tree that was cut off, cut down, because it's not bearing any fruit. Lord, I want to start producing fruits, from the fruit, fruit of repentance to the fruit of righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. If you pray that prayer, I want to assure you that the power of God is available. All you need to do is to make up your mind and say, Lord, as I've given you my heart today, I want to obey you. And once you are willing, his power is there to lead you every single day from glory to glory, ha, from victory to victory. Somebody just is empowered right now 
somebody was just empowered right now to begin to overcome the things that used to overcome you. It can be exciting when you see what was holding you captive before, broken, and you are free in the name of Jesus. You go into your day and live for Jesus. Stop living for the devil. Say no to the devil and say yes to Jesus. Go into your day and be blessed. And we release the blessings of the Lord into today. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of August. We declare that no power of darkness is permitted to function. Yes, we arrest and bind powers of darkness. Father, only that which you have declared today to be is what is going to be. There will be no accident, sudden death, calamity, spells of hell. The release is hereby broken. People are released to go forth into their work and be blessed. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus.